those of you who have actually signed up for, and used, meet and fuck sites, have they worked? And if so, what was your experience like? I used Adult Friend Finder several years ago while I was in college and before I've turned into nothing but bots having cyber sex with each other. I took a shotgun approach, message every girl in a 20 mile radius and wait. The one response that turned into something was a girl who was about 10 years my senior, solid 6 stroke 10 in her profile picture which was apparently several years old. She was a little chubby in the picture and when we eventually met up at a bar, she was large. The kind of large where just, everything part of her body had tits on it. She also smelled. We both drank a beer and I made up some bullshit about having to leave for work. We said goodbye in the parking lot and she blew me a little bit by her jeep. She also sneakily stuck her hand in her purse and squirted perfume on her hand and rubbed it all over my junk. It wasn't until years later that I realized that she was trying to get me busted for cheating with her, even though I was single at the time. She thought that's why I was leaving. I stopped trying to get those sites to work after that. This is exactly how I imagined a meetup on that site would go. Surprised it wasn't worse, really. Honestly, if you're good looking enough, Tinder and Puff are great for just hooking up. And the girls on there can put if you're just looking for a hookup, swipe left to mask it. But we know. Yes. The ones who mention they don't want casual are the easy ones. That doesn't make sense on first read. Care to elaborate? The ones that put don't message me if there's one thing on your mind, are the easy ones to get that one thing on your mind. Reverse psychology. Oh man, this is my time to shine kinda sorta. For reference, I'm from Chicago. Work sent me to Australia, and I took advantage of the trip to wander all over the continent and to visit New Zealand, cause who the hell wouldn't? Anyway, I had Tinder the whole time I was there, and I used the tried and true always swipe right method. I made some interesting matches, including a girl named Penelope who wanted to bake my dick into a pie, we did not meet, and a transgender MTF who accused me of having a fetish when I said that I wasn't interested in hooking up with a transsexual person. Nothing against you, more power to you, and you should have all the same rights as everyone else. But that doesn't mean I'm interested in sticking my ding ding dong in your hoo-ha. Anyway, I matched with a pretty cool girl me last night in Brizzy. Sadly, she had work the next day and I left for New Zealand the next day, so we never met IRL. But we kept chatting, and added one another on Snapchat and, eventually, Facebook. I went back to the States. Kept chatting. After about 3 months of this, I asked her if she'd like to meet me on a travel date since. You know, I liked her. I suggested Hawaii, because that's halfway between us both and would be a cool place to explore. She immediately replies, how about Iceland instead note, Iceland is the opposite of Hawaii in almost every way, shape, and form. Colder, totally different, though still pretty, landscape, beautiful Nordic people instead of beautiful oceanic people. They use almost all consonants to name things compared to Hawaiians who use almost all vowels. Pretty much the most different choice from Hawaii you could choose. But I went with it, despite my brain saying, this is an excellent way to lose a kidney, Seth. We were there for two weeks. It was actually awesome. We drove the ring road and camped and were intimate those nights. I was so happy, because one night I got to use the that was f***ing intense pun. She just looked at me in disgust and said, get out of me, which was fair. We still talk and she is still disgusted with me for that pun. 10 out of 10, would recommend. And what man? Don't leave me hanging like that. Serious jaw danger, man. Apparently he didn't finish. I actually laughed out loud. Like proper laughing. I ended up getting arrested. It turns out the girl lied. She was 15 but said she was 18. She f***ing lied on her profile, lied to me in person and text messages even when the cops got there and were outside she assured me she was 18. This was a while ago in the early 2000s. I was 23 or 24 why oh I think. We were getting it on in the back of my car, and a cop comes up and talks to us she looks young so he has her come sit with him in his car. We were parked up a hill in a spot, where people go to do things like that. Another cop comes over, tells me I'm under arrest and I spend a night terrified in the police station, being interviewed by detectives the whole night, 
having my penis and balls swabbed, etc. Fortunately, the girl was honest and her parents were lenient so I got to leave the next morning with no charges and nothing on my record. Scary as shit though, if a girl looks 18 you don't just assume she is be careful about that shit. Holy shit, man. You're extremely lucky you're not classified a child predator right now. I'm glad for you. If he had proof she lied multiple times, no DA is going to put that to trial. Yes they will. Statutory rape is a strict liability crime, meaning that you don't have to know that the victim is under the age of consent, you just have to have sexual relations with them. That's just one of the many changes that should be made to us law. I always feel bad for the guy girl that is tricked into believing that someone is of age. Yeah, if she says she's 18, has a fake ID, fake birth certificate, fake social security number, fake parents that will say she's 18, and you have sex with her, you're in the wrong and should have known better and will spend a good part of your life on a list. And that's assuming you get lucky. If she's under a specific age, you'll be spending a significant amount of your life in prison if she's significantly underage and you couldn't tell, you're probably an idiot though. Yeah if they are 8 or something. There was something with a 12-14 year old girl that seriously looked well above 18. In those extremes I feel like it is possible. Either way, being an idiot isn't illegal. I had to break it off with a girl when I was 20. She was 18, but she seriously looked like she was 12. I just couldn't bring myself to even kiss her. It was super awkward. That's just untrue. There are 24 year old girls who look like they are 14 and 14 year old girls who look like they are 24. Once you get into Asian girls it's even worse. I found an actual girl on AF. I was really surprised since I had cam model after cam model hitting me up. This led to chatting then pictures and finally a meet up. We messed around for the next 3 years. After a year she wanted to date but I couldn't comment due to her not having a job or an education. But still I couldn't say no to a girl who could suck a golf ball through a garden hose and enjoyed it as much as I did. This led to her cutting communication with me on and off throughout the 3 years. But the last time we hooked up she told me she was pregnant about 2 weeks later. I was scared but I was also not going to jet because if it was mine I wanted a better life for him than she could provide. So I made her get him a paternity test. 2 weeks ago I got the results and I'm not the father. This ended bittersweet as I was led to believe I was the father and was prepared to be one. All the while she knew I wasn't. She may not be sure but went with the latest partner she had. It's not always malicious. As everyone says hindsight is 20 stroke 20 and looking back at our year long conversations she knew. Or more likely the partner with the most stable future. So you know, maybe she really liked him and wanted to marry him. It would also explain why she keeps cutting communication. It hurts her to talk to him while knowing that they won't be together. That line you quoted is saying that she doesn't have a job or an education. Be female on Tinder here. If I swipe right on a guy there's a 90% chance there'll be a match. Girls are harder, more like 25%. Have had one Tinder date so far, I'm quite picky. Guy was very nice and very sophisticated, casual kinda deal and he was very understanding about me not wanting to full on have sex with him. Good night out. Have a coffee date with a girl set up. I'd say they definitely work in uni towns, since students have free time and really want to f Great way to just meet new people too. I've had similar experiences on Occupid in that regard. But women also actually have decent profiles on there and every guy is a fun loving guy who is really laid back however, I can barely get women to message me back yet I'm flooded with messages from 40 years old dudes saying hi beautiful how are you today I haven't tried Tinder but I feel like that might be a better option since I live in a college town, surrounded by cornfields, no less. Ugh. So sick of seeing guys profiles with only this, or variations of this. Is it just laziness? Or men trying to widen their net as much as possible by being super generic? We only have two variations of our kind, but both love to have fun. 1. The testosterone driven male, goes out to the bar to get laid. 2. The chill male, he's laid back, and prefers staying at home to get a date get laid. Fairly attractive man here. I've used them on several occasions. If you're a guy, try to avoid cock shots, they don't work as well. 
I promise. I've done it four times met four women and all four said something to the effect of, I chose to talk to you because your picture didn't have a c in it and your bio is well put together and eloquent. All in all I am still in contact with three of the four girls. The fourth was a raging alcoholic with three kids by three different men and insinuated that she was looking for another baby. Nope nope.